Welcome back, once again adventurers, to Let's Play Steins Gate Zero. In the last episode, the interview between Maho and Moaka got off to a bit of a rocky start, so in the end it was up to Rintaro to sort of get things going. And Maho, for her part, had a very interesting thought experiment concerning just how complex it can be to give a simple command to an artificial intelligence, let alone a basic computer system. You have to be incredibly specific, and with an artificial intelligence, that is virtually infinite. The closest uh, any system has come to being an actual artificial intelligence so far is the Amadeus system. But there are still limitations and flaws, and even if they could work through all of them, there is actually no genuine proof that Amadeus could ever be considered a true artificial intelligence. A simulacrum of the human brain, to be sure, but not a genuine AI. In so far as many, many years of development and research, but when all is said and done, it's still essentially a drop in the ocean. Something tells me that that day is never going to come. In other words, incredibly complex. So that's why you needed human memories. And that's where Kurosu's neuroscience research comes in. So, この記憶というデータの構造が長らく謎のままだった。けれど、クリスの研究のおかげで、ひとまず記憶を丸ごとデジタル変換して取り出すことに成功した。And then, of course, one would need a physio-psychology expert like Dr. Judy Reyes to sort of understand how how the mind works, the interaction of electrical systems and neurons and personalities and everything. In a nutshell, a very large nutshell. Well, you'll be probably waiting forever. Maho suddenly fell silent in the middle of her sentence. Tells me she was about to say something that she knew she was going to regret later on. There was a lot I wanted to ask, but it felt like we had more than enough for Moaka's article. I looked at Moaka, who hesitated a second before speaking. Apparently that's all she could muster to say. I must have... I must have taken a lot of courage on her part to say that many words in a sentence. But that is a good question. Given the amount of information that Amadeus has access to on any given moment, that's certainly true. 
クリスの記憶を有しているわけだから And of course, it goes without saying that Kurusu Makase already had a、uh, ton of knowledge in her mind as well. There was no matching the knowledge of a genius. I'd gone, gone up against Kurusu any number of times and learned that the hard way. In other words, they're not technically the memories of Amadeus Kurosu. But then that begs the question what about any new memories that are supposedly made from other experiences? ただし、人間の能力を上回る人工知能ができるまでは、あとちょっとだと思うわ。I would beg to differ myself. もともと研究者の間では2050年くらいには人工知能が人間を超える時代が来ると言われているの。Hmm. People have also been saying for a long while that the world would end in 2012 as well. いわゆる、シンギュラリティポイントね。Singularity point, eh? Let us just、uh, have a look at the tips. A theory proposed by mathematician Werner Vinge and inventor Ray Kurzweil. The phrase refers to a point in time where an AI is created whose intelligence exceeds our own. In Japanese, it's referred to as the technological singularity. The theory states that. When the singularity point is reached, all further development will be done by AIs without any human intervention, and a non human centric civilization will begin to develop. This will mark a major paradigm shift in human history. Kurzweil has said that the singularity will occur sometime around 2045, and many other AI researchers. While they disagree on the exact date, say that that's going to happen as well. Opinions are divided as to what role humanity will play after this. Or even if this singularity point will even occur. Amadeus の登場によって、その日は想定よりももっとずっと早く到来するはずよ。Seems like Marco has no further questions. I believe that is the conclusion of the interview. Well, we made it. I think there are certain scientists and philosophers who will say that such a concept is completely unfeasible. No matter how romantic it sounds. What a Koga Kano Daigak said to a Omoena Hats again, eh? Okabe san wa Hikoki no yoni sora to benai de show? Shinkan san yori hayaku ido de kinai si Yasumono no dentaku yori, K san ga hayai wake de mai. Ima kono jiten demo Kikai no no lukuba, sde ni ningen o okiku amati iru no yo. Indeed, so far as some、um, physical. Tasks are concerned, but in、uh, existential means, compute machines are still fairly limited in terms of cognition when compared to humans. No, the Kiga Regai Danante, that any more y e n a I think the development of the brain will be a big part of it. Kono Kagaku de Setsme de Kina, Kiseki no mechanism and the Sonza Shinai no yo. すべては物理現象なのだから、原理を解明すれば必ず人工的に作れるわ。But then that begs the question: Is what happens inside the brain could that be considered physical phenomena? 未解明の問題をすべて解決して、真の人工知能を作る。それが私の仕事よ。Something tells me that your work, you have your work incredibly cut out for you, Maho Yajo. インタビューとしてはこんな感じでどうかしら
Kiryu san. I think、uh, Moka has enough material for her superiors at Agri, right? But Moka just stared at her memo pad and didn't look up. Kiryu san? これで十分。きっと面白い記事になる。Framed the right way, and I'm sure that、um, it'll be interesting to read. ありがとう。あ、俺も興味深く聞かせてもらったよ。Well, we certainly played our part and learned something interesting in the process, which is always good to hear. Seems like we're、uh, leaving f e r i s s apartment. I wanted to talk a little more, but both Maho and Moka seem to have work to do, so I decided to leave. Yeah, I have my suspicions about that. Maho thought exactly the way most AI researchers did that there were no black boxes in the human brain. But I knew the truth. There were things inside the brain that science couldn't explain, <laughs> such as reading Steiner. Reading Steiner, ってなんなんだろうな Something that even we can't explain. Was it ever going to be scientifically explained? I wonder. But we have、uh, other places to be, and it seems we're shifting to Maho's perspective. She's probably exhausted after dealing with,、uh, well, dealing with the interview. <laughs> yeah, yawning in open public is、uh, not considered、uh, good etiquette. I'm sure plenty of people do it all the time. Mahu quickly choked back her yawn and looked around to see if anyone saw her. There were other people doing the same thing she was, leaning up against the railing of the bridge and killing time. Of course, they were all too focused on themselves to pay her any mind. She planned on spending the day at Ferris' house, taking care of the paperwork left over from the office's temporary closure. This morning, she'd gotten a call from Dr. Leskinen that had sent her hurrying to Tokyo Denkei University. Tokyo Denkei, it seemed, had offered them a temporary room at the school while their office was closed. Dr. Leskinen had called Dr. Ozaki at Tokyo Denkei, who'd given it to them without a second thought. So now she had to decide to pay the new office a visit and discuss what they planned to do for the future. The Kanda campus from Tokyo Denkei University wasn't that far away from Akihabara, it seemed. Indeed, it does.、Uh, it is, actually, I should say. The sky that poked out from between the buildings had the clearest colour that was unique to winter. She'd spent the whole of yesterday cooped up inside her room, so the cold air felt good. She crossed her arms and reached upwards. <laughs> hmm, I wonder if she's referring to Moika, or perhaps, uh,. Judy Ray is maybe. Possibly. The reason she was standing here was that she was waiting for Moika. Well, I got a Ryan message, so she shouldn't be too far. Almost there. Sorry. Seriously, Daru. 
how, how are you designing emojis for people unless this is recent? But, um... No time. No hurry. Take your time. Thank you. Nancy's certainly making the effort. Maho didn't know the way to Tokyo Denke, so Moko had kindly take offered to take her there. And she'd asked for something else in exchange. What would that be, per chance? Actually, apparently she wants a photo for the article. Oh, that makes sense. I wonder if it will rival Kurosu's article in Science magazine. Maho didn't really like having a picture taken, but if Moka was nice enough to interview her, she wanted to do everything she could to help. Moka had gone back to her home to get her camera. She has her phone. She said it was close enough to walk, so Maho had decided just to wait. You don't know the half of it, Maho. She closed her phone and looked up. And then she saw Moako directly under the bridge, running towards her. And the sound of uh, clacking high heels. It's probably the uh, fastest she's ever had to run. <laughs> Marco went in front of Maho and started to walk ahead. So they're taking the subway. The year had just started and the subway was empty. Maru decided to take a closer look at Moka, who was standing next to her and grabbing onto one of the handles. <laughs> Moka realized she was being watched and tilted her head. Then she took out her phone and started to type. Even though we're not five feet from her. Better get used to this, Maho. Meet the real Moa Kiryu. Maho's phone suddenly rang at the bottom of her bag. She just received a rhyme message. up. I see. So we can talk on the train like this. It feels strange talking to you on Ryan when we're right next to each other. You didn't look like you were doing well. It may have just been my imagination. Moka's expression didn't change much, but Maho thought that didn't mean she had no feelings. When she looked into Moka's thin pretty eyes, she could see that she was an interested observer of many things. Maybe that's what you'd expect from a writer. Seems that Moka is still feeling somewhat awkward. Sorry to worry you. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. I'll make sure you get to Dinke, or Tokyo Dinke, Dr. Hiajo. It's weird being called Dr. Hiajo. Boah? It's weird? Yeah. 
You don't have to talk me, call me doctor, both the real world are not Ryan. Let's be a little bit more informal. But then what do I call you? Just call me by name. That's what you do to Okabe, right? That's because he's a student and younger than me. You can treat me the same way. We'll both be... We'll be roommates for a while when we're both about the same age. So how about we call each other Moago Maho? You wouldn't tell by looking at them, but Maho and Moago were only a year apart. And Maho was 20, 21 and Moago 20, which meant that she was the older of the two. And, uh, it seems that Maho is incredibly jealous of, uh, Moka's appearance. And her figure. Moving on. And Moka doesn't seem to like that idea. I've never called anyone by the first name. I'd be too nervous. How about Kiryu and Hiyajo? Please be one of the few friends I've got in Japan. Got it, will do. Okay. Then try saying it now. <laughs> Which definitely caught Moka off by surprise. Moka suddenly jerked up right and opened her eyes wide. Is not sure about this. Mm. Mahu nodded at Moka's whispered question. If we're doing it, I want to start now. But uh, like I said, I'm not really good at talking to people. Really? I thought you were just nervous because Okabe was with us last night. Like you're the kind of person that gets nervous around the opposite sex. That's not it at all. It's true that when I talk to men I get even more nervous. In other words, when it's just girls, it can't be so bad that you can't talk. Maybe... eh. And since we're both girls, we'll just get along. How about this? When it's just the two of us, how about we try to talk in person instead of Ryan as much as we can? I'd be less bored with someone to talk to. If you're going to be a writer for a magazine, I think it'd be a good chance to practice, don't you? Uh, I'll do my best. At least she's giving it a shot. But I wonder if this will succeed. Mocha seemed to steal herself and then turned towards Maho. Lo and behold, it worked. Kind of. A bit rough around the edges, but that seemed to work all right. The train arrived at their station. Looks like we're uh, making our way to Tokyo DNK, and it seems to be raining outside. The area around Tokyo DNK was quiet. Moko told her. The surrounding areas were offices and government buildings, which meant, which meant that at this time of the year, no one was almost no one was around. She felt bad, but decided to have Moka wait outside. The school was still on break, so she could have waited in one of the rooms on campus, but Moka had refused. 
終わったら連絡するわ Sure not to forget She split up with Marika And where is Leskinen? Somewhere here Mahu got very lost on her way to Izaki's lab The school was completely empty because of the break So she couldn't ask anyone in the end, she'd had to call Leskinen and get detailed instructions. A letter was taped to the door marked Dr. Ozaki's lab. The letter had a photo of a smiling Dr. Leskinen, along with some low-resolution text that looked like it was print directly printed from a PC screen. I think the photo would have sufficed. So, this is our new prep office. これをご覧の皆様全員からすぐにでもおでんかんが食べられます Leskinen's sense of humor hasn't changed, it seems. Still the same as ever. Even knowing his true nature, he still enjoys practical jokes. No matter how formal the setting, when the professor wanted to tell a joke, he'd do it. He really was just like a child. But his carefree personality let Maho and Kurisu relax and enjoy their work. And unfortunately, it's a good way of getting people to lower their guard. <laughs> suddenly remembering Kurisu made her heart ache a little. She suddenly realized that her sudden change of address, coupled with living with a person she'd barely even met, was taking its toll on her. Today, she'd finally get the chance to talk to her again. Or more accurately, the memories she'd left behind. In other words, Amadeus Kurusu. Well, this uh, office space is certainly much uh, more pleasant than the uh, workspace over at Waco City. I'll say that much. It actually feels like a proper lab. And an office, too. When she sit, stepped inside the lab and called the professor's name, the giant in the back came running to greet her, in his usual fashion. Just don't spear tackle yeah, us this time. Huh. One could say that this is the upgraded uh, version, uh, version 2.03, as Daru would, uh, name it. Yes, uh, <laughs> oh, of course you do, as always. The professor clapped his hands and laughed. Maho ignored him and went to sit on the sofa. He didn't seem hurt by this. That's what we need to discuss. Just want to talk to Amadeus Kurusu. She took out her laptop and put it on the table. Her operating system, a Linux variant customized for research purposes, booted up and displayed the login screen. Maho typed her account name the same way that she'd done a thousand times before. I'll just briefly pop over to the tips menu. OS stands for Operating System. 
the basic software of a computer allows that controls the entire system and allows other programs to operate operate in parallel. Most of these were developed pretty much by Microsoft Linux. An operating system software developed in 1991 to be compatible with the general purpose Unix operating system. At the time Unix was extremely expensive and not easily available, so Linus Torvalds, then a university student, developed Linux as an alternative. The code is open source and programmers from all around the world contributed to its development until it reached the point where it could be used for commercial purposes. Many modern web servers use Linux. More we know. There's um, Salieri, Antonio Salieri, I might add. then I wonder just what could uh, Maho's actual password be. For just a moment she stared at the letters in her account name. She quickly put in the password and called up the desktop. And before long Amadeus Kurusu appeared on the screen. Been a while. Too long. It's like Amadeus Kurusu is grumpy with Maho. During Okabe and Amadeus Kurusu's communication test, Maho and Leskinen had avoided talking to Amadeus to keep adding from adding noise to the experiment. That's uh, certainly true. You certainly have an incredible imagination for a computer simulation. That was because she needed somewhere else to stay. もう Glad someone's having fun. Leskinen brought his hands together in an exaggerated motion. It's been far too long. いつでも二人の話し声が聞こえていてからね。ははは。もう。それは全然冗談はやめてください。それほど仲がいいということさ。君たちはまるで姉妹のようだ。さあ、それじゃあ今後のことについてのメーリングを始めよう。Indeed we do, but before that, uh, I should really end this episode of Let's Play Steinsgate Zero. In the next episode, when we return adventurers, we'll see just what these uh, future plans between Leskinen and Maho are, and what they could mean for both Amadeus 
and Rintaro Okabe. As always, until next we meet.